These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? It's Grim Green back here today. Yeah, and uh, people kept telling me that I needed a handle on this microphone, so I'm using a a Nevox pod battery, because I, I feel like that's pretty on brand for this channel. Anyway, today we're going to be doing a good old fashioned vaping myths and facts type of video. I know that there are a mountain of these out there already across all sorts of social media platforms, including like Twitter and people's blogs. I don't know where anybody else is getting their information from, but all of the information we're gonna be sharing today comes directly from the United Kingdom's National Health Services. So much misinformation floating around out there about vaping. Everything we're gonna be talking about today is for nicotine vaping, not cannabis, THC, dab carts, or dry herb vaporizing or anything like that. Now, myth number one, the big one, the biggest myth. Vaping is just as harmful as smoking, and that's a no. That's a hard no that it's just as harmful as smoking. Vaping might not be risk-free, but it is substantially, dramatically, an order of magnitudely less harmful than smoking those traditional cigarettes. Traditional cigarettes are loaded with additives and toxic chemicals and TSNAs and carcinogens and tar. None of that is present in a nicotine vape. UK experts did a deep dive on this in 2022 and found that in the short and medium term, vaping only poses a fraction of the risk of smoking cigarette. And logic dictates that even like long-term use would still be fractional in terms of harm. I, anecdotally, have been nicotine vaping for 14 years. I've, I've had my lungs x-rayed. I've had my heart stress tested by my cardiologist. I've had my ENT doctor look down my throat with a camera. And he said that he would have never known that I was ever a smoker if I didn't tell him. Myth number two. Nicotine, right? Real bad for you. Causes Cancer? No. <laughs> nicotine itself is, is not the main villain in this story. Nicotine is dangerous because it addicts you to deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes where all of the harm happens. Nicotine, while addictive, doesn't cause cancer or lung disease or heart disease or stroke. In fact, it's been safely used for decades in quit smoking medicines and NRTs with no adverse effects. Nicotine is a very mild stimulant, and when it's divorced from burning tobacco, it's about on the same level as caffeine, and like caffeine, it's also dependent forming. In fact, before the terminology of addiction sort of took over the world, health officials and society like at large used to refer to other people's smoking as a habit. Cigarettes are engineered with additives and MAOIs to be more addictive than what nicotine is capable of on its own. Myth number three. Vaping doesn't help you quit smoking. Yeah, this is one of those myths that's just been busted so many times it boggles my mind that people still think it's a myth. The UK is demonstrating this fact right now Sweden is demonstrating this fact right now. New Zealand, South Korea, Japan, even with our own terrible, terrible regulations in the US, the US is kind of proving this fact right now that vaping helps in quitting smoking. The CDC admits this, the FDA admits this, the World Health Organization admits this, the Cochrane Library has high certainty evidence that vaping helps in quitting smoking. This is a myth that needs to die, but I have a feeling, man, it just won't. Myth number four. You know, vaping, it's just swapping one addiction for another, isn't it? This is the one that people seem to have a real problem with. I even hear this kind of horse shit from other vapors. Vaping delivers nicotine in one of the safest ways possible. Yes, cigarettes and vaping both contain nicotine, but all of the harm comes from combusting tobacco. Like I said, with so many toxins, TSNAs, additives, carcinogens, MAOIs, tar, vaping spares you from most to all of that. And when someone is ready, they can taper down their nicotine until they're nicotine free. Cigarettes just straight up do not give people this option. So yeah, 
it's kind of swapping one addiction for another, but the other isn't going to kill me. Smoking cigarettes still kills 8 million people globally every single year. I feel like once we can get that number down to about zero, then maybe we could have a discussion about your moral objection to my nicotine use. This is one that I don't hear very often, but it's the idea that vaping more frequently is worse for you. So not really. Each puff from a vape is a small fraction of the risk compared to smoking a cigarette. And the way the nicotine is delivered to your brain is different. So it's okay to vape more often as long as we're not smoking cigarettes. Not smoking cigarettes is what's crucial and any level of vaping that can prevent that is an okay level of vaping. People frequently tell me across the internet, well, it's easier, it's more convenient. I have my vape right here in my hand. I can just hit it any time. I, I use it too much. I don't have to go outside to smoke a cigarette. And this isn't from the UK National Health Services or anything, but just have some self-control, man. Just put the vape down for like an hour or two hours or three hours. Like once cigarettes are out of the equation, People will be surprised at how long they can go without vaping. Vaping myth number six. Now this myth kind of applies more to the UK than to the US, but it also kind of applies to the US. And that is the idea that the vapes are just dangerous and unregulated. I'm here to tell you no. In the UK, nicotine vaping products are tightly, tightly regulated for safety and quality. NHS UK recommends always buying your supplies from, you know, a reputable supplier covered by the UK safety and quality regulations. It is very, very easy to find legal, high quality vapes in the United Kingdom. In the United States, on the other hand, the illicit market is the strongest because of FDA's seemingly useless and arbitrary regulations. There are a handful of regulated and legal vapes on the market in the United States that the FDA has said are appropriate for the protection of public health. It's just easier in the United States to find an illicit disposable from China because for some reason, FDA refuses to reasonably regulate nicotine vaping. I do use any chance I can to throw shade at FDA. Myth number seven. So this one, I almost did a whole separate video for just this specific myth, but the myth that will never die, popcorn lung. Popcorn lung, it's a scary sounding word. There's no way around it. This, this myth, this myth is like, the most false myth. Vaping does not, has never, will never cause popcorn lung. It just can't. This disease is linked to a chemical found in microwave popcorn factories. There has never been a case of popcorn lung outside of a microwave popcorn factory worker. Popcorn lung comes from a chemical called diacetyl. It's a flavoring that gives popcorn that you know, real buttery flavor and was used in the past in some e-liquids, but it's completely banned in the UK. Isn't exactly banned in the United States, but someone would be really hard pressed to find any liquids containing diacetyl in the United States. And if someone did manage to find some, the volume of liquid that they would have to vape in order to even come close to contracting popcorn lung would be more e-liquid than someone could consume in their entire lifetime. And even then, it's so highly unlikely that they would ever contract popcorn lung. The independent vape industry in the United States sort of self-regulated this out of all of our liquids before the government even said one word about it. Side note though, diacetyl is actually found in cigarettes at really, really, really high concentrations and no person who smokes has ever contracted popcorn lung. Myth number eight, secondhand vapor. Yeah, 
your vape aerosol is harmful to others around you. As a long-term vapor of 14 years, some of these just seem so silly to me, but no, secondhand vapor isn't going to immediately harm anyone around you. Now, NHS doesn't go really in-depth on this one, offering only the statement of, there's no evidence so far that vaping is harmful to the people around you. Vaping is barely harmful to the person doing it. Now, don't think that this just suddenly gives people the right to vape in public and around other people. Be respectful and don't be an asshole that vapes where you're not supposed to, like the Beetlejuice musical. And lastly, myth number nine. This one is Kind of actually a little bit true. Here's the thing. In the UK, disposables are regulated to only contain 2% nicotine solution or about 20 milligram per milliliter of salt nicotine. Elsewhere in the world, like in the United States, where again, the FDA has yet to regulate anything other than a handful of products from big tobacco, disposables are generally illicit and in the 50 milligram per milliliter range. But despite this, I think it's important to remember that there's no benefit to overdoing it with nicotine. Nicotine doesn't get you high. Nicotine doesn't intoxicate. Too much nicotine just makes people sick. It gives me a headache. It makes me nauseous. The nicotine receptors in my brain know exactly how much nicotine I do or don't use, and I always get the correct amount because my brain knows. If someone is accustomed to getting a certain satisfying dose of nicotine, and that person picks up a 50 milligram disposable and suddenly they're getting more nicotine than they're used to, logically speaking, that person would use the 50 milligram less than if they were using a 20 milligram to reach the same level of satisfaction. 50 milligram, five zero milligram disposables undeniably have more nicotine than say a 20 milligram disposable. But again, there's no benefit literally zero benefit, actual detriment to overdoing it with nicotine. It's completely unnecessary. So that's all of the myths that NHS UK addressed, but if you can think of any more, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to address them. That, as they say, is what I got for today. Please drop a like on this video, even if you hate me, and, and think about subscribing because there is a mountain of tobacco, nicotine, and vaping misinformation out there to be corrected. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke-free, like every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh...